Hi everybody, this is Captain Pyle. I'm here with Kendall Christofferson, who is also known as the infamous supernatural Squirrel Girl. And today we're going to be talking about the use of taxidermy and fan art and cosplay. How are you doing today, Kendall? I had an amazing Baltimore Comic Con, um, which was great for what's happened in my life recently, honestly. That is great to hear. Yeah, Baltimore Comic Con, definitely a fun day. So I understand that there has been some outrage, some controversy in regards to the use of taxidermy that is, you have used it um, in visiting certain cons and it has caused some some definite changes in policy for even some cons. Why don't you tell us what happened back in the beginning? So I do taxidermy cosplay because I I like taxidermy, I like cosplay, and I thought, you know, it'd be kind of cute if maybe fan art is usually done, you can see in like graphic design or like art or sometimes sculpture or, you know, cute stuff. I wanted to use uh, roadkill animals um, as, uh, as my beliefs, I don't want to kill what for art. And I wanted to take them and I wanted to make them into um, little characters from different TV shows. My medium mainly is the uh, characters of Supernatural. What happened is that, so the reason why I'm Supernatural Squirrel Girl is that I have 10 different little squirrels um, that look like Sam, Dean, Cass, and Crowley, a hellhound and a demon. I have three Dean Winchester squirrels, two Sams, two, and two Castiels. And I thought it'd be really funny because of the moose and squirrel joke that already exists. And people, when they first saw it, they loved it. Um, but then we had some issues with different cast members and also um, with the... <sighs> Um, the, the fans of Supernatural because of certain things that cast members had said and because people are so protective of their cast members and, and just the way that the Supernatural fandom has been so unfortunately um, I've had a lot of negative feedback recently with different uh, people online in the Supernatural fandom now let me back up for a minute here just to talk about so when you do taxidermy, first of all, you do not go out and hunt. You're not killing animals in order to make art. Um, and you're using roadkill, which in general, all that would happen to a, a poor squirrel that got hit by a car would be they would be disposed of somehow. So it's not you're not doing anything that's causing any harm to anyone. The process that you use in taxidermy it, does it make the squirrel or whatever animal is being used, is it hygienic and safe? I make sure I freeze them, then I skin them, and then I wash them in soap and water, Dawn, and then I uh, rinse them out, and then I soak them in, my tanning solution of choice is denatured alcohol. Uh, but definitely they have to have uh, soap and water used when cleaning them. They have to go through uh, washing, they, uh, neutralizing so and then they also of course have to be brushed come through dried so as long as they go through similar processes they're definitely still clean I mean um, I <laughs> this is kind of weird I like to kiss my squirrels sometimes but I've never gotten sick because um, it's like oh it's a cute little animal well I mean we kiss our we kiss living animals all the time and they're they, they lick themselves after they go to the bathroom I mean like this is dead, and it's been sanitized, and when you sanitize an animal, it no longer can decay. So as long as you take and kill the bacteria and treat the skin so it no longer can decay, you won't get sick. So what you're saying is there's no actual hygienic reason why someone would, ob would object to um, you interacting or having others interact with the animals that you have used as your subjects um, for your art. Yeah, there's there's nothing there's nothing wrong with them if they smelled or if they were uh, uh, something called slippage, which is where you could like pull like fur out, or if there was a bug activity, then you know that you done messed up and you can't use it. This animal has gone through multiple Renaissance festivals. It's been outdoors, and you know it's still 
still there, still one piece, and you know. And I know multiple people came up to you today asking if it was, you know, real and actually wondering a little bit if it was possibly alive. <laughs> so any objections people would have about the use of taxidermy or walking around with um, your artwork is not health related, it's not smell related, it's nothing other than possibly something in their minds and perhaps objections. Now, you said that there was an objection from a cast member or something said from a cast member. Can you give us details on that? When I first introduced all first six squirrels uh, to the cast of Supernatural back at a convention in DC 2016, I had introduced uh, Misha, Jared, and Jensen to them. They had a couple photos, and they seemed like they had some fun. I also had a meet and greet with Misha that same con where I explained to him what was going on, and he seemed really cool with it. But then what happened was that um, a couple weeks later, he was at a convention in Italy called Justin Bello, and someone asked him, what's the weirdest fan art you've ever seen? And unfortunately, there's two videos of it on YouTube of the whole question to end and his words were really off color they made they, they they basically painted me in a very bad picture like a very negative way and i was actually offended by this at first because i looked up to this man but i got over it after a period of time because i had a good you know backbone of friends it wasn't until I found out that people are actually um, trying to ban me from the Supernatural conventions that are run by Creation Entertainment. They're trying to um, harm me. They're trying to uh, ban my taxidermy. And they think that I'm the devil, essentially, to some of the, to these actors. You had a very positive experience with him and explained you know, how you had come to create the art. And then he turned around and at a, another convention he held you up as an object of ridicule, which I can understand being upset about that. And now what you're saying is that people, um, because of his words, are trying to, are threatening you, are trying to get you banned from cons. What is their objection? Are they just saying you shouldn't bring taxidermy around our favorite stars? Or are they saying... You're harming animals. What, what is their main objection? It's actually a combination of different reasons. Some people say that I actually kill and torture for fun, which then they, they think I'm a sociopath or a psychopath. That is not true. Some fans are super crazy protective of their actors. Like they feel like that they're their god and they have to protect their god and, and everything about them. And it's kind of like, you know, once someone says something, they have to latch onto that word and they have to live it. But what they don't understand is that Misha Collins is a human being. He made an honest mistake. He did apologize, you know, and then he said a couple weeks ago at a convention in Minneapolis that he felt bad for calling out fans uh, and hurting feelings. Now that pro that's probably just talking about me because when he found out that I was really hurt by it, I mean, he let me, he gave me a hug, he let me cry, he told me to delete my Tumblr, which I did, and unfortunately people think that I threw a big scene when really I didn't do that. I said some things online, but I never did anything. So you're saying that when he heard that you were upset, you did not, like, badger him into apologizing or making some type of statement. He just realized that he tried to make a joke at your expense, probably to entertain the crowd and saying, oh, yeah, I had this girl come up to me with, you know, an uh, actual stuffed squirrel that used to be alive. And, and he tried to make a joke. And when he realized that it had hurt you out of his own um, free will, he extended an apology to you. However, the fans are still not being as forgiving as what you would say. Yeah, um, Misha Migos, and I'm not saying that for all of them, but definitely the ones that I've seen online 
are not forgiving at all. They actually paint me as the creep, the psycho, and that they have to alert all the staff that I'm coming near him. I actually had uh, messages threatening my safety, my ha and my life, and my and my animals because I wanted to get a photo with him at a convention in Pittsburgh. I had made his Gishwiz uh, scavenger hunt mascots, and I just won a trophy for them at a competition that same week. I just wanted to show him, look, I won an award. But people, because they knew I was going to be there, they made me look evil. So I can understand where people might think, um, have the misconception that people who do taxidermy are causing harm to animals. Uh, I can understand where they can think that, but that's clearly not the case here. And to try to ban you from seeing him. Now, this is totally unlike there was another experience where a fan went into their personal hero and bit them. And you did not cause any physical harm at all. And, you know, even if he was a little bit concerned, we've already eliminated, you definitely didn't cause him any risk of infections from a, an animal because it's properly prepared. And I definitely understand not everyone is a fan of taxidermy. Um, however, it's there's nothing illegal about it. And it sounds like the animals that you're using would serve no other purpose. It's not like you're hunting them down and taking their lives from them, and it's not like you're taking away food or something like that. Um, so, what would you like to say to the fans that still have this misconception? Honestly, you know, if you really have an opinion about it, why not just reach out, talk to me? You know, but, but do it in a calm way. You know, if you really think you know everything about me, that's really sad that you haven't met me and you think you know, because what have I done to you? All I want is to be, my, my work to be validated like a graphic design or a painting or a drawing, you know, all fan art should be considered equal. But in my case, my fan art, which is part of my cosplay too, is actually risking my safety. Risking your safety, and you said something about it's being banned potentially? Is Was it something that Creation Con has turned around and said that you cannot bring um, taxidermy to their conventions? What happened was that I was at a supernatural convention um, from the 8th to the 10th of September. And I, right off the bat, uh, I already had made arrangements for a picture with Misha with my mascots. He was not going to hold him. Creation had set up rules earlier this year saying that I was not, that they were not, no actor was allowed to touch anything without their consent. So anytime pictures of Misha appear where he's touching my work as of February this year, that's all him. He free will. So essentially, there was so much online chatter, and there were also a lot of complaints that Creation Entertainment actually had over the weekend not only from, I don't know if they were from people who were there, but definitely people from online too. It got to a point where I had an email from Stephanie Zizon, who is one of the main creation runners, and she said, we are very sorry. We have had way too many complaints. It has actually now affected our, the way that we can run the conventions and ability to, move, to run them smoothly, that you and anybody else is not allowed to bring taxidermy to any of our events, period. Unfortunately, though, I got the good email. However, a woman named Sharon, who is their communications director, made them look really negative. It was like, note taken, taxidermy is no longer allowed at our conventions. 
And right after that email got released about two weeks ago, I got so much online harassment that people thought that they won some kind of war. But really the way I look at it is that they made them look like ch children, immature children. Because what people don't understand is that I have social anxiety and taxidermy is a way where people actually come talk to me because I don't know how to talk to people. And so when they see this and they talk to me and it gives me like a hi, you know, like, oh, you're talking to me and I, and it's easier. And, and I want people to understand why do you have to take away someone's pride and joy? Why do you have to think that I'm that crazy or that psychotic or whatever you want to believe in me in a negative light that you had to take away something that brought joy not only to me, but to a lot of other people? When people see these animals, they instantly start smiling, they laugh, they want photos. And now, in my opinion, creation cons are a little darker because of them. I will definitely attest to, we saw today a number of people um, come up to you and were asking about your foxy friend here and wanted pictures, wanted to know about, were asking questions about him and did not seem to be you know, a few people were a little hesitant, I saw that, but, you know, once it was explained, you know, they touched, <laughs> touched Foxy without any, uh, obviously any harm coming to them, and were definitely entertained by it. Creation Con being a private event, um, obviously does have the right to dictate what people can and cannot bring to their convention. However, in this case, it's discriminating against a form of art that, again, maybe not everyone is as appreciative of as you are, but definitely it is a form of art that is accepted, you know, throughout the United States. So you would like them to revisit this decision or maybe clarify it a little bit? I would like it if they could clarify what exactly dictates taxidermy because there are people who go to renaissance festivals and conventions and you can buy things like little tiny animals sometimes or you could buy skull and bone jewelry or fox tails or um, just, just things like that and so you know, they can take away my taxidermy. I still want to be able to express myself at their events. So as long as they let me have like my little bone jewelry or my, my accessories like my hats or my fox tails, I don't think we'll have a problem. My problem is that they didn't get back to me and tell me what exactly determines this taxidermy. I have a pair of um, angel wings that I made and I really want them to be finished signed but they're, they're preserved turkey wings that I acquired legally, of course. And it makes me really nervous about my future right now because I want to still be myself, but does, does basically have they banned my expression and my, my expression of my identity, period, from their cons. That's my biggest concern right now. I definitely understand... And there are people, if someone wears a real leather jacket, is that considered taxidermy? Is that considered... I mean, if you have a product that is made from an animal, which a lot of people do, you have a, a fur-lined coat, that fur may be real fur. Uh, I know there's a lot of people in PETA and other organizations who do not appreciate people having mink coats and other things like that. I am not interested in fighting people who believe like this because you believe what you believe. I've been on so your side of that road before, so I get your concern and your thinking. There are organizations that already are against taxidermy, even if it is what people call ethically sourced. And it sounds like, in some part, you share their ideology because you would be against cruelty to animals, obviously. Yeah, I, um, like, I was a vegetarian and a member of PETA for almost seven years of my life. 
from about 14 to uh, a little past 21. And I don't regret it. I had fun, but at the same time, it also made me very hungry. <laughs> and also, <laughs> it also affected my, the way that the fam my family would run sometimes. Um, it affected my wallet, and it definitely affected m the way I thought of things. In fact, one of the reasons why I decided to say screw it to PETA and animal rights organizations was because when they said that they would not work with tax people, taxidermists who do this kind of thing, and I was just like, well, I'm hungry right now, and I could go for a burger. So I was like, screw it. Let's just, let's just eat what I want and let me live the way I want to, but I'll live it within my means of what I think is right, not what they think is right. Well, this has definitely been a very interesting look at a form of art, again, not a lot of people understand. Maybe some people have some qualms about, but in actuality, it is a very safe way um, to preserve a likeness of an animal. And uh, hopefully we'll be able to find out more and get an update from you if you hear more back from Creation Con. And hopefully people understand that this is not a person who is cruel to animals, who is has any disrespect for anyone, and is definitely a big Misha fan, so is definitely not trying to cause him any harm. Is that would you say that's pretty safe? Actually, he loves my Gishwiz mascots. He and Chris, the photographer, have given me almost five hundred dollars of free photos with him and my mascots. They love them. And Misha did apologize. Right, it's definitely his decision. He seems to be accepting now, apologized. So you're a fan. He appears to be a fan of you. So hopefully those who are acting out of a, a sense of protection of him can realize that they don't have to. Anyway, thank you for spending the time with us. And uh, I would love to hear comments from people about this. Um, you can comment below. Let us know what your thoughts are. So mainly, we just want to stress that while you may not appreciate this particular form of art, it may not be for you. Um, there's no reason to threaten um, as she has been. There's no reason to advocate any type of violence or worry about the actors because, again, very sanitary process. And he seems to like it, so we've got to respect his decision on that. So, thanks again for being with us, and thank you for watching. As always, have fun. Cosplay on. Hi, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please like and share, and we love to read your comments. Don't forget to subscribe, and click the little bell icon to get notifications of our new videos. Thanks again, and we'll see you on the con floor.